Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, hello and welcome to Hello Self Podcast. I am your host, Patricia Leonard. And if you remember, this is the podcast, or if this is your first time, this is a podcast that is designed to help you get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf and turn your cans into cans and get started on living the life you want. Now, normally in my Hello Self podcast, I will have guests that share their story or their life and career story and specifically talk about Hello Self moments that really change the trajectory of their life or their career. Just wake up moments, if you will, or Hello Self kind of things that said, wow, I'm really not happy. I want to do this. Or, you know, I said to myself five years ago that I was going to do this and I haven't even started. So that's a kind of a wake up. And the individuals that I have on as guests will share those kind of moments that really help them see that they were ready for another level of their journey, whether it was career or life. So What I want to do today, since I don't have guests, I'm going to be running this podcast myself and sharing with you a tool that is very important to life. And the the intent of making this change in the podcast this time is that the wake up calls are good. The hello self moments are good. And we want all of those. But we want to take it to the next step. Remember, we said it's about getting those dreams and goals off and manifesting them. So this workshop is to get you on the runway to that success. So it's starting to move you forward with a very significant tool called the resume. Now, you may be looking at me and saying, well, I'm not looking for a job. That's okay. You may say, I've already got a resume. I had it professionally done. That's okay. You may say, I'm retired and I don't want another job. That's okay. There's always a reason to have a good resume ready and updated and on file in case something comes up. I designed this to help you do it yourself. So it's a DIY resume workshop. Do it yourself. And that way you'll know what you want. And then you'll know how it needs to be laid out if you need to update it. But I'm saying I think you should update it right now. And we'll talk more about how a resume needs to be, you need to have it ready all the time because we just never know what might happen in your life or some decisions you might make or a volunteer piece of work that you want to do. And they say, Patricia, could we get a bio of you? A good solid resume helps you to create a bio that can serve you in your life, whether you're working in your church doing something or you're volunteering in the community or you're looking for a job or you're not. Your resume may even open doors. Some things that I say say about a resume, it is there to sell you. So that's what we're going to do is create a resume that says, how can I sell myself? How can I market myself? It helps you understand what your competencies and skills are. If nothing else, it elevates one's self-esteem. I have to tell you a story. I always like to tell stories. But I had this one client, and we were updating his resume. And we have at the top, and we'll be covering this today, something called the career summary. So we developed his career summary 
And then I read it out loud. And I said, let me read this out loud to you. Would you hire this person? I asked him. And he said, well, who is it? And I said, that is you. We just created a career summary for you that is marketing your competencies and your skills and the experiences that you've had. So if nothing else, it elevates your self-esteem about who you are, even if you're not ready to do anything, sometimes it opens doors that you're not expecting. You're saying, no, I'm retired. I'm not going to do anything. And then somebody sees your resume on LinkedIn. And that's another thing that you need on this runway to success is once you get your resume done, it needs to be uploaded on LinkedIn. So your resume needs to be out there because who knows? Somebody may see that and say, you know, I'm going to start a business and I'd like to talk to you about some possibilities in that. So I, whether you see this or not as something at this point, I would recommend that you go ahead after we've had the workshop and create one, because then if nothing else, you could help others, you could help your son, you could help your daughter to have a resume that's going to open some doors for them. So come with me now as we go through this resume uh, layout and workshop that starts to show you how do you create state-of-the-art resume that really sells who you are. I think, I predict, you're going to learn many things about yourself that you didn't even know just by following through on this resume workshop. So now let me go to share, screen share that PowerPoint so you can see step-by-step step while I'm what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are. <laughs> the resume. And it is, I say it is part of your career puzzle. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take the resume piece by piece and put it together like a puzzle. And you'll see how those pieces come together and market you in a way that you've never thought about yourself. That's going to talk about competencies and talents in a way that you've never maybe thought that you had and set a framework in place, if you will, to add all the pieces in. So it is a puzzle like that we're creating today. And let's go to the next piece of that. A successful career transition, and we've talked about that this workshop is intended to help you get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf. Even if you don't think you need a resume to get those dreams and goals off, I guarantee you, whether you want to franchise, want to start your own business, want to work for somebody else, want to do volunteer work for a church, want to do some fundraising for some or a career resume outlining your career transition is something somebody's going to ask for, and it's going to be very helpful to you. So it really shows your transitions or your entire career journey, and it serves as a marketing tool for you. Anything that you that people want to know about you, one of the things that you have as your tool is the resume. It not only talks about your skills and competencies, but there are splashes of who you are as a professional, as a human being in there. So it's more than just a document that we create just so we can get a job. It's much more than that. And you'll see that as we go along. I, again, I am Patricia Leonard. I'm an inspirational speaker, a workshop leader, empowerment coach. And I have designed, as I mentioned earlier, this do-it-yourself resume workshop because I believe that each individual can create their own resume better than somebody else who's trying to do it from afar. 
and maybe just some words that you you write down about what you've done. You know, I had a resume, I had a client one time, he had a resume that had been created by a professional. I'm not saying the resume was not a good resume. What I am saying, somebody else had created that resume and there was an acronym in there. And I said, what do these letters stand for, These this acronym? And he said, let me see it. And he looked at it on the piece of paper and he said, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. That was a great trigger for me to tell him, go in there and write out those things. And if somebody else is putting your resume together, you're not going to understand as much as if you go through these steps that I've laid out here and do it yourself. So you're going to be more authentic in your resume if you've done it yourself. And then when you're asked about it, you already know. Yes, that's what I did here. Or that stands for this. I believe a step-by-step -step process makes it possible for everyone to create an excellent resume. And that's why I've done this. Besides, getting a resume done professionally can be an expensive encounter. And you can create one yourself just based upon what I'm going to give you today. Or if you decide to get somebody to do it professionally, at least you know what you want in and how you want the format to be laid out. Here's what we will cover. We'll talk about the resume types. We'll talk about the value of a resume what is the true value? It just seems like something on a piece of paper. We'll talk much more about what that is. What is what a resume is and is not. There are some things that it is not and that really does not market you or sell your skills and competencies. We'll talk about a PDF and a Word document and where you use each of those documents. We'll discuss the parts in depth, the parts of the resume, because that is very important to understand how the flow of your resume is going to make it easier for somebody reading your resume. And that is your whole goal of putting a resume, not the whole goal, but one of the main goals is to lay it out in a way that it is easy to read by the recruiter the hiring manager, somebody that might be wanting you to participate in an organization. It, it's, it really is a vehicle for the flow being easy to read and easy to understand and make a lot of sense. People will read it if it's easy to read. So that's your whole goal. Make it easy to read and valuable to the person that may be looking at it. And then we'll talk about choices and options that you have in this workshop. Okay, we said we talk about the resume types. Basically, there is the functional resume and then the chronological. The functional resume, I say, is less popular simply because the chronological follows the career trajectory where the functional resume is laid out more based upon functions and the responsibilities you had and the accomplishments you had. And then it talks about the companies you worked for and the movement of your career through that. So it's a little bit more, to me, a little bit more difficult to follow, but some people do it, especially if they've had breaks in their career. They've taken off, a mother took off to stay home with their children, or a man took some, went back to school and got his college degree or her college degree. So if there's breaks in the flow, sometimes they'll do it like this lay it out with the competencies and the qualifications more in paragraph form or in category form, like management, all the things they had of management, training and coaching, all the things they had under, under training and coaching. That's much more focused on function and not so much the flow of the career journey. 
The chronological is the flow of the career journey. And it is also the company. It lays out the companies you work for, the time frames that you were there. And it starts in reverse order. So the good thing is when the reader is looking at the resume, they're going to be seeing your most recent position and your most recent responsibilities in that position because a chronological is laid out in reverse order. The job you have now or the career you have now or the place you are in your career history is going to come first. So that's the difference in each one. I think for most people, the chronological is the one that is most used. The values of a resume. And I think sometimes we don't realize the real value of a resume. It can make or break you. I can tell you about a story that one of my clients told me one time. He played golf with a CEO of a small company. He was in a career transition and he asked the CEO when they were out on the golf course one day, hey, I'd be interested in seeing what you might have in your organization that I could help you with. And may I give you my resume? The CEO said, send your resume in to my human resource director and she will get back with you. So a couple of months later, they were playing golf one day and the gentleman said to the CEO, have you talked to the human resource person or have, have, has she said anything about receiving my resume? He said, yes, as a matter of fact, she did. And he said, here's the reason she hasn't called you. In your resume, you had talked about the importance of quality, doing it right the first time and in a quality way. As she read through your resume, there was a typo. You had typed manager instead of management in a statement. But if you say that, a qual that quality is one of your focuses and then you send in a resume that's got a typo on it, it's very, very telling. And it may not even be true. It could be an accident. But those are the kind of things you can see in that third paragraph down. Professionalism of a job seeker is judged by the resume format, the grammar in there, the spelling, the neatness, and the flow. That's why one of our most important things in putting a resume together is making it easy to read for the recruiter or the hiring manager or whoever might be reading it. That's why I really like to use bullet points and just basic statements instead of paragraphs of information. So it's very important that you get your resume accurate with grammar and with spelling. I, I think this is what I do in my own writing. And let me tell you, I when I write books, I read them over and over and over till I almost dream about them. But I read it out loud. So my suggestion to you to make sure that your resume is as accurate as possible, read it out loud to yourself and perhaps even read it out loud to someone else. Because I think that that's an opportunity to hear what the resume is saying, because the eyes can sometimes overlook things. I have that happen all the time. The resume is a document for highlighting the job seeker's career journey and responsibilities. Like we said earlier, it shows what you've been responsible for and what you've been doing, how you've made contributions and some of the key attributes that you can bring to the organization that is viewing your resume. The resume reflects potential areas of contribution that the job seeker, just like I was saying, they may be having a job posted that you applied for and they have another job that you didn't know about. So they may read your resume and say, well, this person is more qualified 
for this other position we have open. A lot of times they don't post all of the jobs at one time. Let's say six months from now, they may be opening another position. But when they're out there recruiting and interviewing, if they see somebody that could possibly fit that, your resume will go in the file and they'll call you later. It takes an uh, enormous amount of time to do recruiting and interviewing. So they're going to maximize it as much as they can. And you may not have known that they were going to open a job or that they have a second job open that you could fit into. The resume serves as an excellent resource during the interview. If the interviewer looks at your resume, which they will, and ask you a specific question from the resume, then you can pinpoint, well, I did that in XYZ company when they were going through a major re-engineering or a transition in the locations, or I helped them with a startup. So then you can use it as a way to pinpoint exactly where you did that and how long ago it was. So the resume is a great reference for the interviewer and the seeker. Or if you're not looking for a job, just to be explaining what you have done and how you've done it and selling yourself or marketing yourself. The resume is not, and that's what we're going to be talking about here. What is a resume and what is it not? We talked a little bit about what it should be doing in the previous slide. A resume is not a document for inserting words that match a specific job posting. And this is something that I think most people do. They'll just take the job posting and then they'll create those words in their resume because they think, oh, that's going to give me a better opportunity. And we've been told that when they scan resumes, they'll be looking for those words. I can tell you that you might get the resume up scanning, but when you're interviewed, it could be a totally different story. So sell who you are, because when you're interviewed, you're going to be much better at defining what you've done, selling yourself, and getting the job, the career opportunity, or the business opportunity, or the volunteering opportunity, or the consulting Whatever you're looking for, you're going to be better at marketing yourself than if you create a resume that just matches the job description. And besides, I've done recruiting and interviewing for years and coaching individuals for years, for over 30 years. And what we notice is if everything on the resume looks a lot like the job description, we can bet that you have just added those words in, and that's not really you. I'm not saying you don't have the skills, but you haven't taken any time to really think about how do how can I sell myself and giving a great picture of who you are. A resume is not a list of job responsibilities, but with nothing but specific accomplishments to, with nothing Okay, so it's not just a list of responsibilities. Okay, that looks like the job description, right? Okay, this is what the job requires. This is what the accomplishments. But you do want to have your accomplishments on there, but it's just not a list of job responsibilities. It's saying, what did you do in that job? What If you implemented a, a computer system, what kind of system was it? Was it for tracking inventory? Did it save the company money? So you want to talk about what some of the specific accomplishments were that you made in those job abilities. A resume is not the entire book of the job responsibilities. I like to think that your resume is cliff notes. It makes me want to read the rest of the resume to find out. If it's interesting enough, it's kind of like reading your bio, if you will, that is what, <laughs> but it's like finding out a lot more about you. And that's what cliff notes are. It gives you the overview or the picture, if you will. 
and not all the details, but it'll give you the picture of who this person is. We say that two pages are the appropriate length. I know a lot of people try to crowd it in one page and they'll make the font type 10 or 11 just so they can squeeze in a bunch of stuff. And I say use font size 12 because we don't want it to see all jammed up because it's not fun to read something that isn't laid out nicely. So I think two pages is the appropriate length of the resume. And it's fair to you, it makes it easy to read. And then it's fair to you in giving a good picture of who you are and what you have to offer. A resume is not loaded with a bunch of fluffy words or overused words. And this is what we do so much. We take the words that we've said before, like, I'm a hard worker. I'm a good listener. I'm a fast learner. Oh, I'm a multitasker. We want to put in words that add value, like training, coaching, inventory management. So we don't want to put these fluffy words in because they don't get paid for. They expect you to come in and be a good listener. They expect you to work hard and get the job done. Actually work smarter, but be self-starter. They expect all those things. So those are not things that they're going to see as major bidders or skills and competencies. They're much more adjectives that describe who, what you do and they, we don't pay for them. It it's just should be who you are. You should be a good listener. You should be a quick learner. You should be somebody who can manage the task. Multitasking has been proven that people are less efficient in multitasking and less takes less quality gets less quality. So the effectiveness and the efficiency is lost a lot of times by working on so many things at once. So some of the things, the, the buzzwords that we've used in the past really were buzzwords. And now we're expecting much more from our people in marketing who they are. If you want a good job, work on a good resume and then work on your interviewing skills. And we'll have a workshop on that in the future. The next thing that we had said that we were going to cover were PDF and Word documents. And you need to have both in your career file. I think I kind of covered this in the early stages of getting on your runway to success. The Word document is for you to make changes on an update. And I would go in there and look when you do something new or you've had a new experience or you've gone to a workshop. Keep it up to date because you'll end up forgetting those things. Who's most important? <laughs> you. Keep your profile up. And even if you're in a job in a company, and this is another thing that I see a lot of times people are very lax at. They go into a company and then they never update their resume. Now, if you want to grow your career, either vertically or horizontally, I would say that you periodically look at your resume. It doesn't mean that you're going to leave the company. It simply means that you might be interested in another area or you might be able to add value in another area. I had a client that worked in a warehouse and manage the inventory control and the warehouse shipments and that kind of thing, the movement of the product out of the organization. And he had set up his organization in such a way that he didn't really have to do any work anymore. His people, that's a sign of a good leader too, his people were doing the operation day in and day out and making things happen that needed to happen. And so even though he was the director of the warehouse, he was ready for something else. And that's all he had basically done. He had started in the warehouse and then worked his way to the top in the distribution process. So 
I was coaching him and I suggested, why don't you look at something else? What is the organization going to be doing over the next year? Well, he went to one of the meetings and the CEO was saying, we're going to expand to another state. And we're going to be doing that at least by the end of next year. We want to have those warehouses open. So my client came back and told me that. And I said, I want you to call the CEO and tell him that the next time he is in town, he was in Chicago. And the next time he's in town, you'd like for him to come by your office. You have an idea that you'd like to run by him, a business idea. So he did. When the CEO was in town the next time, he stopped and said, what do you got on your mind? And this warehouse director said, I'm interested in negotiating the merger of those warehouses, staffing it, and setting up the computerized system. So guess what? He had been a supervisor over the warehouse, well, had moved up to director, but guess what? He ended up doing the startup of that operation. So that added another skill to his competencies. And it gave him, got him out of his bored feeling that there's nothing for me to do anymore. So look around and see what you'd like to do and keep your resume up to date. The PDF, so the Word document is for updating. The PDF is to be used anytime you share your resume with another because the PDF maintains its format. So when you apply for a job, you use a PDF. When you put your profile together on LinkedIn and you add your updated resume in there, you put in a PDF. So you insert the PDF in the LinkedIn profile. You, If you have references, and you will, you want to send your references and friends a copy of your resume so that they can help you find a job, or if you're in job search, they could send it out to somebody else and you want it not to be distorted. So you want it to be in the format that you created it in. So be sure and send that PDF to the people and your references. Make sure you send it to them. So when somebody calls them, they've got the updated resume right there in front of them. Okay, now the parts of a resume, that's what we're going to now. And if you can look in the black box, we've got the heading, the summary, the employment history or career highlights, experiences, education, certificates. So you see, we've got categories that flow down through the resume. And naturally, the resume will start with your name and your information, city and state, phone number, email, LinkedIn address. Remember, I'm really big on LinkedIn because that's where a major portion of recruiting and getting to know who you are resides on social media. Then the next thing is the summary. And we're going to go into detail on each of these. The summary is specific skills and expertise. So it's a summary, if you will, of all that you've done and what you could bring to an organization, your skills and your experiences. The professional experience then goes down, where did I do that? What were the years I did that? So it starts to lay out the chronological flow of your resume. Or if you've got a, you know, it, it can lay out the categories of experience that you have, like management training. But for now, I'm laying this out in a chronological resume format. So you've got the city, the company, the city and state, and the year. If it was 2021 to 2023, then that's how you would put it in there. Then you've got your job title and responsibilities that you'll have next on your layout. And then education, any languages, and we'll go more into detail on each of these. And your military, if you've got military, or other categories. 
and we'll hit these now in each category and go into more detail. So you ready to get started on creating your resume? We're going to start working now on the layout of the resume and what you say, what is the content you put in there. So we're going to spend more time on the details of the content. Your next step is to complete your resume sections that we just talked about. So again, on your resume, we will have these categories and these steps laid out independently. We'll go through the heading, the summary, and highlight in each of those categories or each of those sections on your resume in more detail. The resume heading. The first thing is your name. Now, if you've got some kind of certification, an MBA or some kind of special license, you can put that up there right after your name, comma, Jane Jones, comma, MBA, or Jane Jones, comma, CDL license or whatever. I mean, you can do whatever you want. The next thing is the city, state, and zip code. And you're maybe looking at that, excuse me, you may be looking at that and saying, hey, you left out my street address. Well, that's one thing that has changed on resumes. We don't use that anymore. It's not necessary until they're ready to hire you. So the city, state, zip code, your telephone number. And if you have a website, you can see Jane Jones had a website, but you use your email. Jane Jones has a website that she put in. So if you've got one, put it in. And then, of course, your LinkedIn address, because that's very important. If they see that your resume is out there, they'll click on your LinkedIn just to see, what did they say on the profile? Have they kept the profile up to date? What does their resume look like on there? So they're going to be real judgmental because here's what happens. People get a job in a company and then they get lazy. They don't do anything to stay current themselves. They do the job and they get lost in their comfort zone in there and forget about taking the next steps that can open doors for themselves. Even though they may, well, it's a job. I should be happy to have a job. They'll tell themselves that. Or they just get lazy about the, they, they'll do a good job, but get lazy about taking care of themselves. The runway to success is intended to get you your dreams off that someday shelf and turn those cans into cans. And one thing that is important in doing that is keeping your resume current. So that basically is covering the heading piece. So now let's go to the next, which is a summary. And if you can see there in the black box, it's a concise paragraph. And you can see, I'm going to give you several samples and you can see what it is. It's not a bunch of fluffy words. It's ba basically... It's talking about career experiences. It can have some personal attributes in it, and I'll show you those. It's areas of expertise and accomplishments that you can market yourself with and introduce your value to a recruiter. So it's a quick glance, if you will, at what you've got to offer. And if I like what I see, then I'll take the time to read the resume. If not, next. So this is very critical. It is the piece that says, are they going to spend any more time with you? It's the piece that begins to see what your value is to that company from a contribution standpoint, as well as a dollar amount and as well as a title. So you can see that this one, and I'll go through some of them in a bit, a bit of a detail, but I want to show you the diversity. And remember, you can take these resumes and or summaries that I've got here, and you can steal lines from it. Take the lines from this that you want to use. You may say, I like that line that says, I'm a leader with proven success in 
whatever your proven success is. This one happens to be management, organization change, and new business startups. So if you like a line in here, then take it and use it in your resume if it's appropriate, because you don't want to have anything in there that if you're asked about it, you can't validate. The, it, what we did here, the senior human resource and corporate training professional. So we started out with basically titles. I don't always start out with titles. And one of the reasons I don't is I don't, sometimes if you introduce yourself as that, then that's who they begin to see you as. I want them to look at your summary and look at the breadth of what you could offer because titles in each company are a little different. What might be a manager in one company might be a director or a vice president in another. You just never know. So I'm not big on always adding titles and levels of the, the professional. But this one is expertise in executive and staff coaching. So they've got coaching experience, leadership development. And that's what everybody wants is to help their employees grow. And that's why employees stay with companies. Retention is so important if they see that they've got opportunities. And the same with you. If you want to have opportunities, be able to sell yourself in whatever the company is doing and add value because that's going to see them or help them see how you could move up the ladder and develop you more. They may even have you cover for them when they're gone. So this is one type of summary. And you can, I like the last line too, a strategic visionary focused on the mission. They want you, I don't care what level you are in an organization, if you're a, an associate, a brand new entry in a certain deposit or department, Focus on, find out what their mission is, find out what their year, yearly goal is, and then maybe let me help you do that. Here's something that I think I could add, but show an interest in their mission and their profitability and their efficiency and quality. Here's another summary. You could start out a results-focused. And they may ask you in the interview, I see that, you say your results focused. What does that mean? To you, what does that mean? And you may respond, I believe in doing a job right the first time and meeting the deadlines. Because if I have to do it three or four times over, it may not meet the deadline that we need to make. So results focus can say something about who you are as a professional and what's important to you with background in leadership. So you're, you're starting to see some similar kind of words coming out. These are the type of words that they pay for, not the fluffy stuff of good learner, fast learner, good listener, good communicator. No, put things like this in that you have done because that indicates right there, you must have been a good listener. You must have been someone who believes that quality is important. So it, it starts to, these competencies start to sell who you really are without using those fluffy words. A team member. So this person is a team member committed to quality. So they may be part of a larger team. And they build productive relationships. If there's one thing the world needs now, and businesses need, it's building relationships and building productive relationships, relationships that work together. It seems like that a lot of things have moved toward opposites. You're either good or you're bad. You can't do this or you can do this. You know what? We can all do more than we think we can if we're shown how to do it. So work with each other to build relationships. If the department that you get your product from is not meeting the time frame that, and it causes you to get behind, don't start to play the blame game. Work with them and say, 
you know what, we need to do something. Can we sit down and have a conversation about this? This thing of blaming and trying to be a victim. Well, you know, I'd get my job done if I could. It's over. It needs to be over because it does nothing to build effectiveness and to build a successful business and a successful career. Here's another one, and I want you to pay attention to this. You see, I started out a bilingual professional because two of the critical things that we're looking for in marketplace in the marketplace anymore are bilinguals. We're a global society. And the second thing that gets one of the first glances is a veteran. So if they start out with a bilingual, you're going to get somebody to pause on that a lot, a lot longer than if you say a professional with career experience. Doesn't mean that it's all gonna be close to everybody that doesn't have, or doesn't speak another language, but it simply says that if they've got entities internationally, this might be something that's very critical. So it'll cause them to pause. So, and speaking another language is really, really getting to be more of a critical skill and they'll pay more for it because it doesn't mean that everybody has one. I do know a company that actually ended up giving their some of the employees that they had within, giving them a six-week crash program on the language of the country that they were opening a business in, opening up another location in. So I'm not saying it will close the door totally, but it's going to be an opportunity that gets a second glance, perhaps. Effective in building relationships, collaborative teams, and winning without when working for out win-win outcomes. And that's what I was just talking about. Instead of playing the blame game or the victim game, I can't do my job because so-and-so can't, sit down, build a relationship and talk together about how you can both become winners in, in the work you do. Expertise in interviewing and onboarding. You know, I had a, a young man that worked on the assembly line and I used him in an interviewing process when they were going to be hiring some people that would be working with him. Who is better at being able to explain the real job and get down to the nitty gritties? And the good thing about that, most people that are applying for a job like to talk to the person, if they have the opportunity, that really knows what the job is about and what would be some of the key attributes that they could bring to that position. A leader committed to ensuring timely delivery, very important. And it doesn't mean a leader is a title. Everybody in a company is a leader. And so are you a leader? Are you committed to do what the organization needs? Are you committed to meet timely results if you're a fundraiser for an uh, organization? Or let's say you are you have a, a leadership role in organization in your community. So a leader, do you step up and get done what needs to be done? Or do you complain about it? So a leader says something about who you are and they may ask you, I see you have a leader on here. What does that mean? And what do you do that makes you a good leader? So I think you're, if you've got these things in your resume, you may have to answer them in an interview. Or you may have to think about, am I really a good leader when you're putting your resume together? Patricia will be right back. This episode is brought to you by Runway to Success, a division of Hello Self. Runway to Success offers personal development, career transition, resume coaching, and support to help you reach your goals. Contact Patricia today to turn your can'ts into cans and your dreams into plans. Remember I said that a resume can build self-esteem too. It can build awareness, a wake-up call that, geez, I'm more than I thought I was. I didn't realize these kind of things. Remember the young man I told you? I read his summary to him. 
and 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 read it out loud and after we got done and I don't I think I told you that but anyway I was putting a resume together for this young man and then afterwards we read the summary out loud and I said would you hire this person he said absolutely I said do you know who that is no that's you so I think that we'll we can put together a resume on a summary that makes us feel good about ourselves, which highlights more about who we are and gives us confidence in ourselves and builds our self esteem. And we do a better job in the interview. We do a better job in explaining who we are. We do a better job in life because we feel good about ourselves. And then I like that last one too, because this is something, I, the last line, I always call myself a cheerleader because I've always been an encourager and motivator of others. I've always said, you know, you can do it. That's why I became a coach and a human resource professional. I hired a lot of people, young people out of college, right out of college. And I remember this one young lady that I hired. And I really, this is, I shouldn't say this probably, but this is exactly what I did. I played on a softball team. I was the pitcher and I like to win. I played on the softball team and this young lady that I was interviewing from college had played college softball. And I thought, oh my goodness, she'd be so an asset to our team. So I have to say that I looked at that as one of her key competencies <laughs> to come into the organization. But I think I expected a lot of her. And here's what she said to me after about three months. I said to her, you are doing an outstanding job. And she said to me, Miss Leonard, I couldn't fail because I would be feeling like I was failing you. You had so much belief in me that you just put me in jobs and said, this is what you need to do. And then you would walk away and let me do it. And she said, you gave me that responsibility. And I felt like I needed to walk in those shoes. So, you know, I think bridging and motivating others they can step up to things that they would never even think they could. Or they could step up to things that we didn't even think as their managers that they could accomplish. And they walked right through it. So encouraging and motivating is a real asset in building a strong, collaborative, efficient team and organization in general. Here's another one, a team associate with background in warehousing manufacturing and retail industries. I remember a young man that I had in one of the organizations that I was working with, they were downsizing. He was affected. He was a driver in a warehouse. And I told him, you know what you need to do is, he, he wasn't very articulate and was very private and didn't communicate a lot. I said, well, one of the things you need to do is to get on LinkedIn because it'll speak for you. And he said, no, I'm not getting on any of that social media stuff. I don't believe in that. Well, after a month out in the job market and he hadn't found anything, he asked me, what was that place you told me to get on? This is a true story. It was right here in Nashville, Tennessee. He finally got on, created his LinkedIn profile uploaded his resume and the job that he was looking for and hoping for and bidding on was a forklift driver because he did not want to have to interact with a lot of people. He was very private and he liked dealing with accuracy, like keeping the stock. I mean, he was just, it was just, he knew everything about where they were located and how many we had, naturally, we had a computer system to keep that, but he was meticulous about putting it in. So he had been driving about an hour to work every day when he was downsized, and he was very sad about losing his job. 
but he wanted another forklift driver position. That's what he wanted. And this is very interesting. Two weeks after he put his resume out on LinkedIn, he got a call. He said, Miss Leonard, somebody just called me. I said, did you apply for a job? No, I didn't. I said, well, what are they looking for? They said they were looking for a forklift driver and they saw that I had that experience. I said, well, call them back. <laughs> and so he called them back. He got an interview, but he did not get the job. I was not surprised in a way because he was not an outstanding communicator. And so about another week passed and he got another call from a different organization. And he called me again. And I said, now I want you to talk this time and I want you to sell what's on your resume and just believe that you're going to get this job because there may not be another forklift driver job right away. This is a true story. He got the job and it was 10 minutes from his home. So what a blessing, huh? He got the job he wanted and it was not the long commute that he had had for like 16 years coming into Nashville to fulfill the job there in the company. So, you know, go after what you want and don't settle if you, but put it out there. If you like warehousing, put it out there. If you like manufacturing, because the thing I like about this, this team associate had background in warehousing, manufacturing, and retail industries. You see the diversity of industries they had worked in. So they had a flavor and an understanding that each industry has different systems and processes that they use. So that is a real asset to another company, especially if it's an industry that maybe he hadn't worked in before, or if it's a manufacturing industry, he knows a little bit about one form of manufacturing systems. So you, you just never know what people are looking for but just be true to yourself about where your talent lies and what it is you're looking for. And this last line, I'm not going to go on this anymore, but the last line, very, very important. Remember I said the summary says a little bit about your skills and competencies and a little bit about you. It says respected by management and peers. That is one of the strongest things, if it's true, if it's true that you're respected by management and peers, that is a great selling point for you. And they may ask you, why do you think that's true? What are some of the things you do that pleases management? What are some of the things you do that helps you work in a collaborative team environment with your other, with your peers? So you see, those are great selling points too. An administrative professional. So this might be a person who supports a director or a vice president or a supervisor, or maybe they do administrative functions in a small company. And so they start out like that. But anything administrative, it could go right to the top of an organization, or it could be at the ground level of the organization. Could be managing an office for somebody, that they're the front person that everybody sees when they come in, because the rest of the operation is run by the CEO and the, the professionals in the organization. Or you might be responsible to put together an event for that office. And that's another administrative kind of function. Budget execution. You may say, well, an administrative professional wouldn't do that. Sure, they order the supplies for running the office. Paper, ink for the printers, things like that. A leader is a person that's out front all the time meeting the public or meeting the customers that come in. So a leader making sure that the customer is getting what they are asking for, the people they're asking for. So again, I've put respected by management and peers there because sometimes they may be the only people in the office. 
while the salespeople and the CEO is out strumming up business and the salespeople are out talking to potential clients. So all these positions are very important. So you can steal lines from any of them that you want. Now on this next slide, I've got expand your summary with additional skills and competencies. And I wanna show you how to do that. What I have put in those summaries may not be totally who you are or may not fit who you are. So additional skills must be highlighted at the top of the resume as part of the summary. So that's what I, and I'm gonna show you how to lay this out. But first I wanted to give you a list of possible additional skills and competencies. Customer service, doesn't every organization need that? You've got skills that can transfer to any job that you want, and you just got to talk to them about how that transfers. Every company needs customer service. Every company is looking at training. Product launch. So these are skills that you may have that we didn't list up there that you want to add in. You may have been part of mergers or you may have negotiated contracts. You may have broker's license in real estate, but you're going to work for an interior design organization or someplace that it could be facilities management, analysis, audit, auditing. So you see these are just additional competencies that you may have that were not mentioned in those others. So I wanted to give you something that would make your mind start working about other competencies that they pay for. Now, here's how we would use those. If you were adding additional skills, you see the bullet points under there? The first thing, we start with that career summary. And it's about five lines, something like that, four or five lines. And it's the things that we just went through, all the different summaries that we went through. But you say, I've got more skills. I've got more things that I want to put in there because we just don't want to list a bunch of stuff up there. We want to highlight your best competencies in the four or five lines then you come down here and you put in additional skills and competencies that you have. You may even have a bullet point that says you're a photographer. It doesn't mean that you've done that in a company, but you do that as a side business. So you could add that in. I had one person that was a counselor and she said, should I put that in there? Absolutely. When you're working with individuals and teams in an organization, counseling is and coaching is so important because we're human. We have things that we don't understand. We have times that we're sad and depressed. We have issues at home. So those are kind of skills that can work in organizations too. So we have to think about what kind of the job are we looking for and then highlight those skills and competencies. And this is the way them, they you lay them out. It's just put bullet points under that paragraph. Here's a sample of how it would look after you add some additional skills. So it can really be a quick glance and that's what you wanna do. It's a quick glance to get them it's a teaser. It's just a teaser about what you can do for that company. Then it causes them to go down in to the details of the resume and see where you did it and what you were able to contribute in doing those things. The next thing is resume employment history. And that's your professional experience, or you might say job history or what career history or whatever you want to say. But we're going to talk about a sample layout and then the value of the bullet points. So the professional experience area, you would first list the company you worked for. The last one, remember, because we go in reverse order on the chronological resume if that's what you're doing. And that's basically what this layout is about. So company, 
city and state and year to year. So 2021 to 2022. Now, one thing I do want to highlight here, if you've worked only one year with the company, you don't say 2022 to 2022. You simply say 2022. So it wouldn't be a dash year or anything. Another thing that you may be noticing is that we don't put months on there anymore. It just takes up space and it's not, it doesn't really add value. So then the next thing under that line is the job title. Then there's a couple of ways that you can do this chronological listing of your career flow. So you could have a brief of job responsibility. So you could have a one line or no more than two sentence highlight that or brief that talks about what you were responsible. I was responsible for managing the day and day out, the day and day activities of this office. So that could be a brief responsibility statement. Then the bullet points would talk about what you do under there. Now, here's something that I really want to highlight that is very important. After every bullet point, you see I've got an action word. So directed, led, researched. So this starts to say something about who you are. You directed an operation. You led a project. You researched them. So it begins to talk about not only what you were responsible for, but the outcomes. Directed the operation of a three-location company that was elect was given an award for organization of the year for some reason, you know, I don't know what. But all you need to really entice them to look for more is directed the operation of something. Led a project on re-engineering the company or led a project on implementing a computerized inventory system. I don't care what it is. It's not important at this point. The thing that is really important is the action word. The next thing is I want to lay out is simply the same thing repeated except we didn't put in a responsibility statement. Remember, that is optional. In my own resume, I go straight to the bullet point. So again, action words, managed, responsible for, coached and trained. So you see, don't waste my time with a bunch of fluff and stuff up front and never, never, never use an I or me pronoun in a resume. That's not, I manage the, no, start with the action word, manage the operation. I see so many people using I and me, even in the summary. No, we don't need that. That's not the place to have it. This is a professional resume. So the highlight here is either a responsibility statement and, or no, responsibility statement, and then the bulleted point starting with an action word, very critical. What I've done here is given you some more action words that you could start out with. Increased sales, decreased errors on the line, zero, zero defect is our goal. Coached, facilitated training sessions, hired, employees for a certain project, developed training sessions, planned the next steps of our process, improvement process program. So you see budgeted, within budgeted the organization, budgeted the expense, to stay within our organization's financial goals. So resolved, contracted, supervised. So these are simply action words that you can use as you develop your resume. Now, there are many more. I only wanted to give you some to jumpstart your thinking. Then we go into the remaining pieces of the resume. And you can see what that is. Education. If you don't have a formal education, 
you can put in the information, high school or some school that you may have taken a class in and got a certification in, a program. The education category, put most recent, is what you want. So if you've got a bachelor's degree that you received 10 years ago, have you done anything since then from an education standpoint? You may have taken a skilled trade school program. So you may have done a lot of things that you could add as part of education. Then below that is if you've got college, your your degree, University of Michigan, where that degree was in the city and state. The date of that graduation is not necessary. And I know a lot of people say that. And I see a lot of people put their education up front. There is nobody in that is out there in the marketplace anymore that hasn't done some kind or has achieved some kind of work experience. Start your work experience and don't put your education right up front. If they want to look at the education, they could go to the back and see that. But in most cases, not every case, but in most cases, what they want to know is what you have done. And you may have held jobs while you were going to college. I had one young man, we were filling out his resume and he was he was just out of college. And I said, so let's look at your summary and what work experience. He said, well, Miss Leonard, I haven't worked. Well, I really don't have any experience except, well, I guess I did. I worked at McDonald's. I said, you got customer service. You worked at McDonald's. You, what else did you do at McDonald's? Well, sometimes I would have to run the cash register. That's a competency right there. What else have you done at McDonald's? Well, sometimes when the boss would leave, he would have me set, that's assistant management kind of experience. So you don't have to lie about it, but you have to be truthful that you've done those kind of things and then tell what you did. It wasn't that you had the title, but your manager felt competent enough in you or confident enough in you that they could say, take over, I have to be gone for a couple of hours or put you up front with the customer or had you make change and, and take people's order. So it may have, you may have been a cook meeting the requirements of what the special orders might be. That's a customer service. So I don't care what you have done. You've got some skills and competencies. Certificate, license, and affiliation. So if you've got some in there, you can combine that with education if you want. You could put education slash certification slash licenses. So you could put that all together. You don't have to separate it out. I've just done that to show you if you do have them, are they current and what are they specifically? The next category that you might use, and these are not required. These are your choosing. Languages. If you said a bilingual, this is the place where you note what the specific language is, define it. Spanish, French, whatever, put that down here and what level of fluency you have in that. You may say, I took it in high school and I've, well, you wouldn't say I, but you may have high school classes. You may have extracurricular classes in Spanish. So you may have something like that. Military, remember, bilingual and military are getting the first glances in a lot of cases now. So if you put a veteran with professional background in, then you want to talk about what specific branch of the military were you in and maybe the positions that you held in that role. And then volunteering, nobody <laughs> in a community anymore is not volunteering in some way. I remember when my son was in grade school, I worked helping the recreation department. I coached his hockey, I coached his baseball, I coached his football, and 
I loved it. I loved it. I'm just a jock at heart anyway, <laughs> because I played a lot of softball myself. But so there's a lot of functions. You may have been a fundraiser in there. That helps you to say, I've done fundraising, because that could be one of your competencies that you add up front. Or you've been a leader in an organization. You were the president of that organization. So those functions are things that talk about who you are, not only in the community, but the experiences and the skills that you have. Now, what we're going to look at now is the resume after it's done so that you can get an idea of how it looks in the flow. Because remember, the format is very important. Remember the one person that typed one word wrong instead of management, he had manager on there. And then the format. The format, I am not a big cut of... Because I think a lot of times they crowd in stuff and it doesn't always help with the flow. So I'm not a big advocate, but I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying make sure that you market, that they market yourself, those templates market yourself. But this is the, the typical flow that I like that really makes it easy for the reader to glass. The first page is most important in a resume because if you haven't hooked them by then, <laughs> the people that are reading it, if you haven't hooked their interest by then, probably they're not going to look at the next page unless they're only looking for education. And that might even be on your first page because you might have had Jane Doe MBA. So this is the flow, your career summary and any competencies that you want to add under that, then your professional experience, you can see how it lays out. I like to capitalize and bold the company name, and you can see that there, and then go down to regular type for the city and state. It's just my preference. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong, but I think you should have a resume that looks like a masterpiece. So it's not just blasé. It's got a little bit of oomph from someplace. And so I think the boldness and the capital letters can kind of indicate, oh, okay, we've come to a new company. We've come to a new job area. And then under there, we've got bullet points. Now, the very last job, remember, everything's in reverse order the the job that you had most recent is first. And you can see that I may have a few more bullet points under that first job simply because you may have taken on greater responsibility as you moved up the ladder. And then the rest of them, four or five are bullet points are about what we recommend. Three as you move down. So less and less. I see so many people have a million bullet points under their job. And truthfully, I think what it really is is just what they took off of the job description that they had at that time. Be truthful to yourself and talk about what you did and how you added value to the company. So the format, this format allows a recruiter or an interviewer to get a quick snapshot of what your experiences are and the responsibilities you've had. Now, page two, I want to talk a little bit about that. You can see at the top, again, Jane Doe. If you had MBA on that first page, you might have comma MBA. And then in the center or wherever you put it is two, simply says it's page two. Then you've got your phone number and your email here. Remember on the first page, you had your LinkedIn and you could put it here, but it's real important to have on the first page. And the thing here is real important to have your email and your phone number. So again, we continue with the jobs that you held. And then we go down to education. And if there's any other categories you're putting in, you go down. This person happened to put down professional development and affiliations that they had been part of, like 
the president of women in film or leader of the fundraising for a, a certain organization or something like that. And then any training that you may have taken that supports your career growth because being on the runway to success is about taking advantage of those opportunities that give you more skills and experiences perhaps even. Tips and reminders about page two. I may have covered most of these when I was going through that. On page two, header of, is it, you'd use it, the header from the page one, and you pull off a lot of the same things, except that you've got the page number on page two. So people will know, oh, there's another page in case they have a paper copy and they get lost. When sharing your resume, be sure, I just want to reemphasize to send a PDF copy to anybody or when you apply online. Do not list references on the resume. We used to put references up on request. We don't do that anymore. First of all, they don't really need your references unless they're interested in hiring you, making you an offer. However, some of the job descriptions today are still requesting and requiring that you have a reference on there or two or three. So what I would suggest you do is talk to the people that have said they would be your references and ask them if it's okay if you put your name, your email, and their phone number on that open document because it would be there for people to see. I know we say we don't let other people, but just give them the choice. Give them the choice. Do not use I or me. I have already reiterated that a couple of times, but I just want to say, don't do that. It just shows that you don't understand what a real resume is about. If you make a copy, a paper copy to give to somebody, then what you want to, and I don't think we use those much anymore, but if you do, we recommend white resume paper. It's easier to copy and doesn't look so dark. And then again, I want to reemphasize the font size is a 12 pitch, simply because we have people in the marketplace working longer and they're not as much fun to read when you've got those that you have to squint and get down and almost put a magnifying glass on to read the resume. If you have a website or title designation, add it in the header, and we've talked about that. Don't use abbreviations. If you remember, we said that too. Not everybody may not know the acronyms that are unique to your company or to your work. So spell out, at least the first time, spell out what that acronym or that unique term is. These were just reminders. We've already covered them. But remember the correct tenses in jobs. And I think I see that that is a real issue. Remember, we talked about grammar as one of the things that people will watch. And in your most recent job, you're going to use probably INGs, providing, researching. And then in the jobs past that, you're going to use ED because they're past tense, directed, managed, coached. But in the present job, you if you're still out there looking. Now, if you're in the market looking, you can go ahead and the job that you just left, you can have EDs there. And that's okay because you're no longer in that job. But if you're in the job market and you're doing a job now, then you it probably makes sense to use the ING, providing, coaching, directing. Okay, bravo. <laughs> Congratulations. You have completed the state of the art resume workshop. And I'm hoping that you begin to see that these are important things to get you on the runway to success, to create those dreams and goals and to manifest them and to start 
turning your plans into your cans into plans because it is real important that we just don't talk about it, but we start doing it. And we can listen, like I said in the podcast, I have guests most of the time. We can listen to their stories and to say, I'd really like to do that. No, I'm saying get a resume together about who you are and get out there and do that. Have a hello self moment. Say, you know what? I'm going to quit talking about it and I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to start manifesting it. I had a woman recently. She was a CPA with a local health organization. She came to me through a referral, and I think it was interesting. She said, Patricia, I went to college to get a CPA to do all the accounting stuff and all of that because my parents said, that's a great place to get a job. You you know, the marketplace always needs that. And she said, it wasn't what I wanted I really wanted to get up from a desk and be out there socializing and be around other people. I think human resources or some kind of recruiting or something like that would be more fun for me. So we looked at her resume, had a lot of transferable skills to take her to those. Then the next question I ask her, "What what are some organizations in this town that you would like to work in? We started identifying those. We updated her LinkedIn and put this new resume on there. Of course, she had a CPA title, but that doesn't mean every organization can use that in some way because it is about looking at the bottom line. But what she wanted to do now, and we didn't highlight that like starting out as a CPA, We started out as a professional with experience as a CPA and then hiring and some of the other things that she had on her resume. So the last question before we left that session, I said to her, so you're ready to find a new job, right? She said, yes, that's why I came to you. I've been ready for the last six months. And I said, so when are you going to leave that job? You have to make some commitments to yourself that you're going to do it and give yourself deadlines. Just like you have to give yourself a deadline that I'm going to update my resume because of this workshop. Or guess what? Time flies. I always say that if we don't act on commitments made, things will just get undone or never done. So I said to her, so when are you going to leave this job that you're on now that you don't like? And she said, well, Miss Leonard, I'd like to be out of there within. I said, wait a minute. Did you hear my question? That was not the question I asked. The question was, when are you going to leave this job? That's creating a deadline. That's creating a deadline to get your resume updated. That's creating a deadline to get those dreams and goals, one of them off of that shelf. And she said, okay, I'll tell you the truth. I'm going to leave this job in two weeks. Now I thought, woo, boy, I hope I didn't create a monster here. So about two and a half weeks later, I got a call. And she said, Miss Leonard, I have to share something. I just took a new job today and I love it. It's recruiting for an organization that does recruiting for corporations. Look at her background. It's going to all serve her now because she'll have companies that she's looking for people for. And she did it in two weeks. And I know you're going, or or two and a half weeks. And I I know you're going to say, oh yeah, that's just a story you made up. No, guess what? Out of the clear blue sky, a young man that she had gone to college with had seen her on LinkedIn and said, oh my gosh, I was reminded of our days in college. And I just thought I'd follow up and see what you're doing and where you're living now, because she was not from Nashville originally. And in the process of their conversation, 
he said, what are you doing? And she said, well, I just resigned from a company a week ago. And he said, so are you looking for a career opportunity? He said, oh my goodness, I work for this recruiting. That's how she got the job. So if we act on commitments made, things will happen. So I just had to say that it's not about the it's not about the resume, but it is about the resume because getting your resume up to date take you out of a depression state and say, you know what, I can stay here or I don't have to stay here. Or I've been wanting to move to Colorado and now I've got a good resume to do it. Just get it done. Nike says it best, just do it. <laughs> I think that's still their motto. But congratulations, you've completed the workshop now. So that's one commitment I hope that you made and you have completed. You didn't leave me. <laughs> if you are, you can hear this. Now, I mentioned that the one of the other things that you would have would be options and choices. So let's look at what those are. If you decide you would like to have your finished resume, you've gone through this workshop and you've completed your own resume in your own way. If you want to have somebody review that finished resume and give you some feedback, you can do that in a 20-minute session for a slight fee, not anything like getting a complete resume done. If you decide after completing this training <clears throat> that you would prefer to have your resume done entirely by a resume coach, that option is available too. So the good thing about having completed the workshop, even if you have a professional do it, is you know what you want now. And it's not a bunch of fluff and stuff and fancy words that a lot of them use. It's clear now what you want. So even if you don't want to do it yourself, you know when you've got a good resume and when you haven't. And you know when you have a resume that's going to market you and give you the opportunities you want. So if you decide either of those options to request a resume review or a resume to be completed by a coach, you can email me at patricia at patricialeonard.net. I just want to say Thank you. This was a different look at our Hello Self podcast, but it's still really very much about Hello Self because when you get your resume done, you'll be saying like that young man that I read that summary out loud, yes, I'd hire that person. You can look at that resume and say, yes, I would hire this person. And you're going to feel better about yourself. Even if you stay in the position you're in now, you'll, you'll have made a choice. And even if you decide to stay in the same company, but you want to grow vertically in that company, take that completed resume up to the human resources or the manager of the area you'd like to be in and say, I'd like to talk to you about opportunities in your area or human resources. I'd like to talk to you about what I need to do to get opportunities. So you see, doing a resume can empower you to feel better about yourself and take some steps to enhance your overall satisfaction with your work, your career, and your life. And again, I just want to remind you, the Runway to Success is a division of Hello Self. It's actually my website. And Hello Self is a piece of what I've used in that Runway to Success is what I believe in. Get on the runway. Don't become complacent. So when you look at my website, it'll say Runway to Success. And then my podcast is Hello Self. And that's a way to wake yourself up. I do a lot of things on my website that perhaps can help you. But I want to say one thing. We'll be doing more of these. I have one that I'm going to share with you on Entrepreneur, a one-page business plan. 
and then on interviewing. So we'll do these kind of things periodically. And I hope you like it. Let me know uh, by emailing me if this is something that you found benefit in. I would really like to know that. And again, I just want to remind you, I am Patricia Leonard. I am your Hello Self host. And as always in my sign off, thank you for listening to Hello Self podcast. And remember, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.